Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. Boy, this is interesting. <laughs> we had a, an eventful Wednesday. Um, some of you uh, experienced that yourself if you could not get on Facebook. But um, I, <laughs> I normally broadcast on Wednesdays at 11 and we had uh, an outage of Facebook and some other social media sites that I didn't know about until an hour and a half into desperately trying to get on. I had downloaded, hi Mary Jo, I had downloaded um, so, uh, an extension that I thought I needed because there's a program that I use for choosing winners. And when I went to that program minutes before I was supposed to go live, it gave me this pop-up thing that said you need to have this extension. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So I quickly clicked on that and that's what I thought caused my issue. Good morning, everybody. There's Brina again. Hi, Heather. Hi, Vicki. <laughs> um, and so I uh, freaked out thinking it was something I had done. Um, I never thought to look on the internet, Google, anything, because seriously, I had done this one thing right before I went live, and I thought I had downloaded a virus. And I couldn't do it on, I couldn't get to Facebook on my phone, I couldn't get to it on my iPad, my, my um, laptop, and so, then I thought, well, maybe, you know, like my Facebook profile had been taken over by something. And so, yeah, for an hour and a half, I struggled just trying to communicate to all of you <laughs> to, 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 just to tell you that I can't get on. Um, it was a crazy, um, I don't know, how many minutes is that? 90 minutes. But eventually I figured it out. And this is after calling Apple and everything. <laughs> so we're all good. We're good. And it's working because I can see that you're replying. Hey, there's Donna. Yeah, so people couldn't even reply. Yes, I had um, some friends that I was calling, like Vicki, um, my, um, my fellow, up, my upline demonstrator, Susan, I was saying, you know, can you get on? Can you like, can you reply to people? Can you post? And um, most people could not. So hi, Joanne. <laughs> awesome. I'm so glad that you're all joining me because I was feeling pretty isolated that day. <laughs> it was crazy. Anyways, we're back and Facebook is back and um, I feel comfortable with the comment program works. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but um, it is Friday instead of Wednesday. It's Friday, March uh, 14th and my boys are on spring break with me. So I have a helper with me today. My oldest Nicholas, Nick, he goes by Nick, is going to join us. Um, I asked him if he would help me out with comments because you know, you all know that that watch me once in a while you know that I miss them and I feel so bad. Some of you are sharing about your outages too with Facebook and I know it was it was kind of a freaky thing, but it really showed me how much I am connected to my social media. It's kind of sad, <laughs> right? But you know, it was, it, it was important that I got on and I couldn't even message you, but we're past that now. I just wanted to apologize for me not connecting with you until after. Um, okay, so let me read my notes here. Um, okay, for those of you that are watching this, a recorded version, um, just know that I'm broadcasting live on Friday, March 14th at 11 a.m. Central Time. So if that's not the time that you're seeing this video or you're watching it on YouTube, just know that it's not live anymore, but I would still love to see your comments. Um, I, I read them when they pop up on my um, my notifications I, I go in and I, I'm able to see what you say so thanks yes Kathy we are back and I think it was you that helped me out with um, I, I think I could only communicate with you it was really weird there were a couple people through messenger that I could only communicate with and Kathy was trying to help me by posting something on my page for me although it wasn't seen by anybody I noticed so I don't think she had luck either the gremlins, <laughs> yes, they may be kind to us today, Catherine. I love that. Hi, Nancy. Glad that you joined. Okay, so Nick, if you want to come on in here, I'll introduce you again because some people may not know you. Okay, come I think a in. lot of people know. Well, some people do know you, <laughs> but we always have new viewers. So this um, is my son, Nick. Say I, hi. Hi, but can I say something? Sure. It's not your fault that you couldn't communicate with them yesterday. I know. So you or two days be ago. apologizing. Yeah. I know, but I still feel like I should apologize. <laughs> so Nick is going to sit in the background there and I have a new view. I don't know if you noticed, but I have a new view. Um, I decided it would be fun to show this portion of my room. The other portion is always messier. This is like my neat side. <laughs> so 
<laughs> Anyways, I'm showing that and um, Nick is going to read comments as we go in case you guys have questions along the way. He doesn't need to read all of them, as you know. You've done this before with me. But if there's anybody that asks a question, Nick, just um, go ahead and, and uh, read it out loud to me. You can interrupt me. I'm going to start by um, letting you know that I do do prizes during my broadcasts. So we have... <laughs> I haven't picked them out. <laughs> That's so funny. I was so worried about getting live today that I haven't picked out the prizes for today. Maybe I can think of them as we go. Or maybe I'll ask my other child to go below my desk and pick out a couple things. <laughs> That's so sad. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe Nick can do it. Um, so, but I do want to share with you that I do have a prize from the last broadcast. You can go ahead and go down there right now if you want. There's oh, my bucket. Here. Yeah, I have a bucket. Um, there's actually, this stuff here might be well received. That, there's two of those. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I know what he's picking now. Um, so I have, I have a prize from last time, last time I broadcasted, that I have not given out yet because we draw a winner from the, um, the current video live. We draw one winner, and then we wait until the next broadcast, and we draw a second winner from that video. So this one still needs to be drawn. It's a roll of the ruffled ribbon, and it's in a retiring color, soon-to-be retiring color powder pink with a packet of envelopes. So yay, we will draw for that prize. And Nick picked out some other great prizes for today. So I'm just gonna set those aside so that you don't see them yet because they're, they're good ones, really good ones. Okay, I, I, oh, and they like your cap. Catherine likes your cap. All right, did you hear that? Oh, she likes your chilled cap. Yes. So I think, oh, and then just to mention about prizes, if you do not reside in the US, I cannot send you the actual product, but I will send you, I'll send you the card I made, okay? How does that sound? So everybody will win no matter where you live. We'll get started by sharing the measurements and supplies of the project I'm going to share today. I'm so excited. So here we go. Let's um, tap on that one. There we go. So our um, supplies for today are going to be on the right-hand side, and it also includes some um, cardstock on the left there. Do you see that? So I'm going to use my little arrow here. We're going to be using a square piece of Whisper White cardstock. And I'm using the kind of Whisper White that is thinner because you want to have a thinner um, type of cardstock for this. It gets really thick if you do something, uh, if you use, if you make this card base with something like a regular cardstock thickness. In fact, designer paper might even be better so that it folds flat into your envelope when you mail it. Um, so those are the measurements for the white that we'll use. We're going to use some petal promenade designer paper, which, and I didn't mention it here, but you can get that as a free celebration pick right now. They added this in March 1st. So you can choose the petal promenade designer paper, which I will display for you because it's super pretty. Um, we're going to use that, and we're going to use some Blushing Bride and Melon Mambo cardstock, a, a dark pink and a light pink for the accent colors. On this side, you'll notice that I have um, everything here except I forgot to list two items. I forgot to list the um, tear and tape adhesive and the take your pick tool. So I will have this posted hopefully on my blog tomorrow. Normally I share this stuff on my blog. I, I transfer the video there, I transfer the photos and the measurements and all that on my blog at stampyourartout.com. Um, I usually put it there on Saturday, but today is the day before Saturday, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to get it done or not. I will really try my hardest to get it all up and ready for all of you. Okay, so the, the thing that I want to do before we, um, we move to watching, um, <laughs> oops, hang on a minute, before we move to watching this, um, okay, I can't set it up. I'm trying to work with my cameras right now. Before we move to, to watching what I'm going to dis, uh, demonstrate, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you my desk. I thought you might get a kick out of that. So let's take a look to see what I have displayed on my desk. Here we go. There we go. All right. So I'm using my other camera um, so that you can kind of get a feel for what how I have this set up. You can see I have my computer over there. Um, I have things that I want to share on my desk. There's my fake piece of wood. It's awesome. <laughs> and um, then we have like a few other tools on this side right here. So that's my desk area. 
And if I'm gonna go up the side of this little stand here, you can see I've got a script in front of me, and that's the stand that I actually broadcast from. I have a little thing where I set my camera into. So this is where my, iP or my iPhone, which is what I'm holding right now, that gets set in there and it looks down on top of my desk. And there's my iPad, and that's my control station so I can see what I am broadcasting to all of you. So I actually have three cameras. I have the iPad, I have my iPhone, and then I have my computer desktop, which is over there and Nick's playing with us. And there's Nick right there. <laughs> Say hi, Nick. All right, so we're gonna put this back into the stand. Okay, oops, there we go. And we're gonna zoom in. Sorry if I made anybody dizzy. I'm sorry, so sorry about that. And we're gonna zoom in a bit here so that you can see. Okay, and we're ready. <laughs> that was quite the show, right? A lot of you have asked me about that and I have not yet made a little intro video to show how I have it set up. So I just thought I'd give you kind of a little teaser of that. I will try to explain that better in a separate video for those demonstrators out there who are interested in doing broadcasts like this. I use a program called Switcher Studio if you're curious. Now you can see the beautiful papers in front of you. This is the Petal Promenade paper. It's a beautiful designer series paper with florals on one side and then these really fun designs on the other side like a marble, um, kind of a metallic-y paper that's crinkled. Here's another rock or marble surface. I don't know what this is. It's very etchy looking. <laughs> I don't know. Some other kind of stone. The bokeh look. I love that. And then we have some more um, kind of stone look. So just beautiful flowers. We're going to use the flower side today. And we're going to take and grab our trimmer first. So <laughs> thanks, Mary Jo. I'm glad you appreciated that. Hey, Kendra. Good to see you. Yeah, isn't it fun to see the workings behind? So I do have a fake wooden table. It's not really wooden. I am trying to look for one um, because the one I have from Ikea is, is not real strong. It's kind of, it jiggles. Can you see that? <laughs> so right now I have the look of a real expensive table, but it's not really there. <laughs> All right, we're going to insert our eight and a half by 11 thinner Whisper White cardstock into our trimmer. And we're gonna put that in at the eight and a half inch mark because what we want is we wanna have a square piece of cardstock, eight and a half by eight and a half. And I'm just gonna, oops, see I knew I would do that. So I'm, <laughs> I'm reaching into my camera with my right hand because that's what I'm used to using. And my arm just, there's my arm. <laughs> it just goes right in there. I'm using a new angle today for those of you who haven't seen my past videos and I'm trying to get used to it. Hey, Nick, any comments yet? <laughs> hey, Teresa's with us. She got to see us live. Awesome. So I scored, or I cut this in, um, in a piece of eight and a half by eight and a half. And now I'm going to take, and I'm going to score this at four and a quarter. So that's in half. Half of eight and a half is four and a quarter. So we're going to score here. And I'm using the measurement on this side. And then I'm going to rotate it. And I'm going to score again at four and a quarter. So now I'm going to stop for just a second. Did you notice that the name of my, um, my card that I'm going to do today is Ori Base Fold Card? And I just shortened or Origami to Ori because I did that with another card, and I've noticed that other people have done that. So um, let's just bring in this little piece right here. This is a square piece of designer paper. actually comes from the Petal Promenade. And I have folded it in half, in half, and then the other direction, diagonally and diagonally. And what you have here is an origami base fold. This, if you do origami, um, the paper art uh, of origami, you know that this is called a base fold. And so it, it sets you up for doing all kinds of things like paper cranes and boats and all kinds of fun stuff. So this is the base fold, but there's one thing that we're not including in the fold that we're gonna do with this card, which is why I shortened it to Ori. <laughs> Ori base fold card. We're not going to put in one of the diagonals. We're just going to put in one of the two, but not both. So now that I've scored in this direction and this direction, we're going to flip it over because that'll help with the folding. And we're going to score it diagonally from corner to corner, one corner to the other corner, but we're not going to go the other way. So we're just putting in one. Okay. Just one of them. 
Hey, Nick, how are the comments coming through? Are you paying attention? Yeah, it's mainly just like... Oh, good morning. shared good morning. Oh, thank you. And yes, thank you so much for sharing, you guys. <laughs> All right, so now we'll just set this aside because we're going to need that again. And we're going to fold this. So we're going to take the mountain side of the fold, the part that bumps up a bit and that's going to stay on the inside that's kind of a tip that you want to do with all your scores is you want to keep the bump or the mountain on the inside so we'll fold it this way and we'll fold it this way and we'll use the bone folder pretty soon here too to make it nice and crisp but let me just share with you now we'll flip it over and we're going to fold this way so again the mountain from that crease is on the inside and be really careful when you fold you want to make sure that your connections are exact as possible. So now we're bringing the bone folder in and we're going to make it nice and crisp. Okay, and now I'm going to show you the card that kind of inspired this one. So let's just bring that in. This card here I did with the last paper pumpkin kit from February and it was inspired by a make and take card that I did at my upline uh, Susan Campfield's team meeting. And so it has a fun little explosion in it. This is going to be a larger version of the inside of that card. So we're just going to fold it now into that position. Okay, we've got our base ready to go. Now you may feel like it's not exact. So this is the point where again, you're want, going to want to bring your bone folder in and really make sure everything's lying as flat as possible. Get all those creases down. Okay. And you can tell now why you want to make sure that you're using as thin of paper as possible because you've got one, two, three, four layers already that's going to be trying to fit into an envelope for mailing. And then when you add the decorations, it's going to thicken it up even more. So the thinner the paper, the better. Again, I'm using the Whisper White regular. Okay, let's now bring in our paper trimmer again and we're going to cut a couple more pieces. We're going to cut this piece of designer paper into four by four squares. I have a four inch strip from my 12 inch long designer paper and we're going to cut that to four inches. A great fold for a graduation cap. Yeah, I agree. Mary Jo, that's... Now make that card and share it with us. <laughs> so now I have three four by four pieces. Two of them are gonna go on the inside and they're gonna be cut diagonally. And the other one is gonna go on the outside and be kind of like the front. And I think I like this one for the front. So I'm gonna check these. Oh, that one's better. I'm gonna do that one for the front. A question. And, yeah, question? What size square was the one inside the card? Oh, the one inside the card, that was uh, inside this one here. That was done with a four by four inch piece, I believe. Let me check. Let me check. Um, yep, four by four piece on the inside of a three and a quarter by four and a quarter inch um, card base, okay? All right, so now I wanna cut these diagonally. And I can cut them together if I want to, but um, just to make sure that I'm giving you the right directions, I'm gonna do this twice. So when you're cutting diagonal or, or point to point, you wanna treat it differently than you would a scoring blade. You wanna actually start inside the cardstock. So I'm pushing the blade down right here and I'm going to pull away and now I can come back in and I can work my way back into the paper without bunching up that little corner there and then slide it all the way up. So I'll show that to you one more time here. We're going to set it up in here like this. I want to zoom in. I'm going to try to zoom in without um, getting in the way of the camera. Let's see if I can do it. Oh my gosh, I did it this time. No arms. You didn't see my arms this time. <laughs> Okay, so there we go, corner to corner, and then we want to start it onto the cardstock, push away, and then slowly come back in and scoot it all the way up. Now we've got our pieces, and I'm going to keep them together. They're going to be um, paired up together because they need to go together. And then we want to cut one more piece. We're going to cut this strip. So this is our petal pink. Is it petal pink? Yes. Petal pink? No, Blushing Bride. I'm using Blushing Bride. So this is our Blushing Bride um, cardstock, and it's just a scrap of it that is four and a quarter inches wide, and we're gonna cut that to three quarter inches. <laughs> like that. 
Did Nick just yawn? <laughs> I've already yawned three times. Oh, I'm so sorry. Do you not want to help me? No, I want to help you. I'm just, okay. I'm not into this kind of stuff. So. <laughs> He's not into card making. All right, we're going to scoot back out here so we can only, see everything. The only type of art I like is like coloring. So. Okay. Awesome. So let's go ahead and add these pieces. So we're going to flip it over and add with our snail adhesive in four corners this four by four piece. Now when we layer it on layer it onto here, we have a four and a quarter inch by four and a quarter inch square base because our cardstock was eight and a half by eight and a half. Okay. So there's our front piece and I want my card to open up like this. So this will be up, this will be down. So I'm just going to set something to, there to remind me that that's the down. Actually, I'll set this here because I need this. And then we're going to flip these two over together. Now the, they paired up. We're going to flip them over together and we're going to add the adhesive together because that way we can get right up into the corners of, oops, can you see that? We're going to get right up into the corners of those pieces that way if they're connected. And then we'll just add adhesive in these corners. Nick is 13. Where is it? <laughs> I, I added that in there just to explain why he's not into what I'm into right now, but that's okay. Maybe, Maybe someday he'll... Sports and music. So. Yeah, he's into sports and music. Okay, we're going to press that down there, and this one will line up here. But he knows his mama loves card making. Mm -hmm. All right, so these two will go together like this. And again, if, if you have any skinny strips of cardstock ever that you need to put adhesive on, if you can do them next to another piece, you can get right in there and not have to get all that gummy adhesive all over your work area. Or you can use that wonderful silicone, um, silicone? Silicone? <laughs> uh, pad. Okay, so these are going to go here. Like that. And now we're ready to decorate. So there's the bottom, there's the top. I'm going to set that up there on a separate area of my desk a little bit further away. And now I want to stamp some pieces. I'm going to bring in the stamp set called Happy Birthday Gorgeous. It is one of my favorites. The reason why I love this stamp set is because it has a ton of birthday images that are just the perfect size for so many, um, so many shapes, punches, uh, areas that I usually use on my card making. So I love that they fit within the circle punch. Plus you've got this cute little balloon here and this one here that works with the balloon punch, the balloon bouquet. So um, I've already got those stamps set up. We're going to bring in the um, happy birthday and the make a wish. And our ink color that we're using is our darker of the two accent colors. Oh, you know what? He does stay up late on, um, on, uh, Spring break nights. So I was thinking that too because it took me a long time to get both my but boys last, up this morning. But last night, I last night I went to bed earlier because I stayed up till 5 a.m. the other night with Lucas. So I went to bed early last night. The only reason I was you took me long to wake me up is because I had a cramp. Oh, okay. So yeah, he went on a sleepover a couple nights ago at a friend's house. Okay, so we've got those two and we're going to punch those out Sorry, I'm reaching, I'm like leaning into the camera. <laughs> I'm reaching for my two inch circle punch and it's gonna be a tight fit with these, but they're, they work. So we're gonna punch out the happy birthday and the make a wish. And the make a wish we can use right away. Now this is, this is the excess from the card, uh, the whisper white card base. So you've got one more piece if you wanna use it somewhere on your card. We're just gonna set that aside because I'm not gonna use it. Somebody asked a question. What's the question? It's to me. Oh, okay. Um, so the sport I like is football and running, and then the instruments that I like are piano and drums. Drum set. <laughs> drum set. So. All right, so now we're going to take that four and a quarter inch by three quarter inch blushing bride strip, and we're going to set that into our banner triple punch. This is our banner triple punch. I think it should be called triple banner punch, but it's not. <laughs> and then we're going to flip it over and make sure it looks centered. And it's pushed all the way to the end. That's why we cut it so long. We're going to punch it out. And now we have a strip that's going to work perfectly in here. That's why I hesitated. I was about to stamp it. And then I'm like, oops. And his instruments are piano and drums. <laughs> I saw that, Robin. Yeah, she was asking about your instruments that you like to do. Yeah, I know. I 
already responded to that. Oh, you did say that? Yeah, I said sports and running and then piano and junk. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I wasn't paying attention. All right, for my Melon Mambo colors, I've already cut this strip down. I've cut it to one inch wide by, I believe it's 11? Yes, 11 inches, okay? So one inch by 11 inch. Now this one will fit into our triple, our banner triple punch really well because we have a channel for the one inch width. So you just have to stick it in there and use those guides and then punch and you'll have a perfect little trim on that end. Another punch that we're using is the leaf punch. So I have one of those punched with the um, Melon Mambo color and we'll do another one with the Blushing Bride color. A hint to those of you that are beginning stampers, punch upside down. It really, really helps. Um, another punch that we're going to use, and this one isn't really necessary, but I, I think it adds a lot to the card that I'm doing. Um, this is the two and a quarter, so it's slightly larger than the two inches, and it gives a nice layer. So we're going to add that in, and we're going to stamp the hooray, the little balloon hooray. We'll do that upside down because of how the stamp, uh, the punch is positioned. So we're going to stamp that upside down in the corner like that. Now I think we have all the stamping out of the way. Oh, I can't wait to show you the finished card, you guys. So here's the, um, the balloon bouquet punch. And um, we're going to flip it over. And this, this one fits the smaller balloon, which is why I needed to do it upside down because it just works in there really well that way. Okay, we have all our pieces. Here, oh, here's one more piece. We're gonna use the large balloon from the Melon Mambo. The other accent pieces that we'll use will be one of the pearlized doilies. This, by the way, is also a celebration free pick right now too. So you get two packs of them. And then these are the petal pink. That's where I got the petal pink from. This is the petal pink rhinestones, right? Yes, petal pink rhinestones. Really fun, they come in different shapes. So let's move our punches out of the way. Let's bring in our special adhesives and our tool. We got our take your pick tool. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add the inner pieces. So I'm gonna take the It's Your Day strip and we're gonna put adhesive on the back. And remember, um, as I look up to try to catch some comments here, if you are commenting, um, then that's, that's good because it's gonna get you into the drawing. Um, but you can also share the video and just make a note that you shared it, just comment that you shared, and that will get you into the drawing too, okay? I see that Anne is asking where I'm from. You can't hear me. Oh, well see, and that's, I was told too that this little video in the corner helps. I am here, um, I am from Andover, Minnesota. So um, hopefully you can read my lips. <laughs> Yay. Um, I know that they have closed captioning on something too. Someone was telling me that, so. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this leaf punch piece and I'm gonna put that right behind this like that. So now it has a little fun design there. And that's gonna go in my upper square of the card like that. And then these balloons are gonna go in the lower square. So that's what, again why I love this stamp set because it has all these fun birthday messages. So when you open it up, it's gonna say it's your day and hooray. Now we're gonna close it, and we're gonna take, oh, one more thing we have to put there, the make a wish. This circle here is gonna go right on the front, and that makes sure that it's put in the right direction. It's gonna go right in the front in the center, like that. Close enough, right? Okay. <laughs> now we can take and wrap our belly band. This is called a belly band. Um, and I'm wrapping it so that it's almost touching the edge here and as I wrap around I'm just creasing it by hand um, you don't want to crease it with uh, your paper trimmer scoring blade type thing because you want it to fit but not too snug so if you go by a certain measurement it might be too tight to get off and on so just wrap it and make sure that once you've wrapped it you can kind of slide it back and forth so now we'll take it off, now that the creases are in there, we're gonna grab our bone folder and we're gonna just give a little bit of a curl um, upward on that piece there, as, you know, just to kind of give it a shadow when it sticks down. Next, we're gonna add some adhesive onto the belly band. So I'm just gonna tear off two one inch strips here. And here, I'll put it out this way so you can see better. So I'm just gonna put these two little one inch strips right here and here. And they're about, 
an inch away from the first score line. You don't want to have them going um, too close to that score line or they're going to be seen. And if you're like me and you have trouble getting this tape off, you can use the take your pick tool. It's optional, but it really helps me to peel off the backings. Wow, not a lot of questions today. I must be doing a great job would, explaining things. Huh? That would be a beautiful Mother's Day card to me. It would. Oh, and also someone liked your nails too. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. Okay, so now we'll wrap this around like this. And before we tack it down, we have one more piece to add. And it's sitting here waiting for me. It's going, don't forget me. Okay, so this is gonna go right here. And it's gonna stick down right onto that tape like that. Okay, so it's almost to the edge of the card, but not quite. And now we'll take and wrap it and stick it down. And it's okay if you don't get it completely lined up. There's a little bit of a, an edge of the cardstock there, but that's okay because we're gonna cover it up now. We're gonna take this piece and we're going to cover it up onto this section here. Um, let's just do that. I was doing it in a different order, but I think it should work this way too. No, you know what, it won't, it won't. We have to do it this way first, okay? And there's a reason. So first take your adhesive, put it through the middle, and line up your doily on top. Like, oops, and press it down. <laughs> Hang on. Line up your doily on top. And that way you can use the little bumps on the scallop edges here to um, position this because we wanna position it in the middle. So now we'll bring our adhesive and go across like this. And we're just gonna, um, center it and then make sure that we have two bumps here and two bumps there that are uh, middle aligned because we're going to use and i'll just use my take your pick here to show you we're going to use this center section here to put a little accent and if it's off it's going to look funny so that's why that's why because i am a little i don't know a little ocd or whatever you want to call it um, about that i like to have things lined up Mathematical, there, that's a term I can use. Mm. So now we're peeling off the dimensionals on the back of this. Nick, is there another comment that you wanna? Yeah, there's a question. Okay, what's the question? Do you film both from your iPad and your phone? I do, so the, the filming is going on from my, my phone. Right now, this is, this is the phone up here, the camera that you're seeing down onto the desk. And then there's the other camera, which is looking onto my face. So there's, it's a program, Switcher Studio, that does multi-cameras. I noticed that I have a lot more shadows in this direction. I'm not sure why, but we'll try to work on that. Anyways, we're almost done. We have one more thing to add, and that is these fun little guys. And you could use the spatula end, although I haven't tried that yet. We have a spatula end on these. Let's see if we can pick them up with this. Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh, I should have been using this all along. So there's one of our rhinestones. And this will add bulk to your envelope too. These will make it, um, for sure, you're gonna have to put an extra ounce stamp on it, okay? So there's that. And let's open it up. Got a little cat hair on there. So to open it up, you just slide this off. Happy birthday, make a wish, it's your day, hooray. And I have two other versions to share with you. So we will, you know what, let's leave that one open so you can see the inside of it. Here's the closed version of it. If you want to get a quick picture, e <laughs> smile, Nick. E <laughs> sometimes when it's recording, it gives me these still shots to choose from, and so yeah, we'll pick one. Hopefully, it'll give me this one. <laughs> Here's another version. Um, this one is when I was using the Grapefruit Grove rather than the Blushing Bride color, but um, both Nick and I were more of a fan of the of the pink one. The pink the one, yeah. Mock. Yeah. That's why you should get an app called Fonto, because then you can make your own thumbnails. Okay. And you have to get still shots. Awesome. That's what I do on my YouTube channel. Okay. Awesome. Tell us your YouTube channel really quick, Nick. Scooter Pro YT. Scooter Pro YT. Find Nick two. there. <laughs> and this one is actually my favorite. I loved this purple paper the best, but I ran out of it because I made a bunch of team cards with it and didn't have an extra pack at the time. So um, I thought, well, why don't I just do another version? So this is another version using the Blackberry Bliss and the soft seafoam color. Again, if you're commenting, <laughs> Robin, are you saying love, love, love to the purple one? 
it's it's striking isn't it now watch on the inside it looks like that so um yeah i love the purple version the most i love pink but for some reason this one's just just making me happier i don't know why but we'll just put those into the picture here so you can see them too um so we're gonna draw for a prize and um this is the prize i think you'll be happy because these are gone and these were actually gone for a while and then they came back for a short time i have two more uh, rolls of organdy ribbon that I'm going to give away now as prizes. So, um, so to the first lucky winner, I think we need to move to the computer so that we can pick the winner pick. of that. Can I do the picking? Yeah, we'll let we'll let Nick do the um, do the picking. I have to set it up for him though first. So let's move to the computer. Oops, and let's. There we go. Okay. So what we need to do, Nick, is we need to come in. This is my this is my page that you guys are all on right now, and we're going to go to the video section. So we're clicking on videos, and we're going to move to the one that we did last. And I'm just going to copy this link, and we're going to put it into this spot here. Oops. Oh, it's ready. So you can do a paste, which is that key and Command that key. Yeah, I know. Okay, and then click the, yep, perfect. Awesome. Very good with electronics. Ah. And so we have 226 unique, oh my gosh, you guys, there's a lot of people on. Okay, now scroll down to here and click the start. Ha. But we want to scroll so we can see the names. Got them. And the winner for this, this is the last, oh, this is Done. last time's video. Sorry, this is last time's. This isn't this one yet. This is from last time. I was going to say. And the winner I from last time bad. gets Stop. the, um, oh, sorry, here we go. It's these little guys here. Diane Bergman Mangles. Sounds good to me. Diane, you're a lucky winner. I'm just going to click on her name really quick so that we don't lose her. And now we're going to go back to this video. Okay, I'm going to refresh the screen. So if you want to get in on the prize drawing, make sure that you're commenting now. And we're going to refresh the screen. <laughs> Is Nick doing a drum roll? Drum roll. Under just, your arms. Not under my arm, though. <laughs> So we're gonna click on that and copy it. And do you wanna put that into this spot? Yeah. Okay, so that was 228 from last time. I don't think we're gonna have that many live with us right now, but let's find out. How many live people? How many people that are alive? 101. <laughs> 101 of us right now, yay! <laughs> That's awesome. And the winner for the roll of ribbon, the roll of organdy ribbon that is so prized and, oh my goodness! Manuel Rios. Manuel Rios. Yay! Congrats to you. So next week, um, for those people who are watching this after the live, you still have a chance. You can comment and get in on that prize drawing. So we're going to just go back to the screen there. There we go. Awesome. Let me tell you if I have any announcements this here. I want to make sure. Shot. The still shot? Oh, yeah. He's <laughs> looking at the computer still, but he doesn't realize. Now it's just us on the computer. So say hello, Nick. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for helping me out, bud. Well, yeah, um, I'm done. Yeah, I think we're done. But I just want to remind everybody of a few things. Next, <laughs> he goes off dancing. Um, next time that I broadcast will hopefully be next Wednesday if there's no Facebook outage. And um, we will uh, do that, dry, that prize drawing for the second ribbon winner at that time. Um, what else? So that will be... February, no, not February 20th. Oh my gosh, March 20th. March 20th will be the next broadcast. And I am looking for club members. So if you're interested in joining a online paper crafting club, um, the way it works is you just place a minimum order of $25 worth of product for each month for, tw uh, for six months in a row. And in one of those months, you get to reap the rewards of the benefits, the host benefits. Um, and it's usually a lot higher than $15, but you're guaranteed $15 in free merchandise. Plus you get a card every month that I make and send to you as a thank you for being in club. It's a good deal. So if you live in the U.S. and you want to be part of my club, just uh, let me know. I'm also going to include a link to that in the description um, of the video after I post it live here. You'll see that link. And... I'm trying to think. Oh, the picker program. Janine is asking a question. The picker program is called commentpicker.com. So we have demonstrators and we have um, people who are not demonstrators who watch these. And I've had a lot of demonstrators who have asked me what I use for my program. For the Switcher Studio, by the way, I believe it has to be Apple 
uh, products, although I think there are some that are not Apple products that have OS, I don't know. Anyways, you have to look into it, but there you go. Hopefully that helped a lot of you guys out that have been curious about that. And I think that's, oh, oh, one more thing that I just have to share. You only have, what is today? Today is the 15th, I think. You only have like a half a month left if you want to get in on the wonderful starter kit deal that's going on right now. Oops, there we go. This bag is an option for the starter kit, and it is something that a lot of people are wishing they had. Um, we demonstrators were able to purchase it before uh, January 1st went live, or January 3rd, before the starter kit went live, and some of us missed out on it. So sad for us that missed out, but happy for us that didn't. And those of you that want to get the starter kit, you have the option of choosing that beautiful bag with it if you want. It's $175 worth of product for just $99. And you don't even have to pay shipping on it. It's just 99 plus tax. The business supplies are not even included in that. You get to pick out whatever supplies you want um, or products you want in that kit. So if you want the Big Shot, that could be included in the kit. If you wanted the Stamparatus, if you wanted this um, beautiful paper, I, you know, you can choose the things that you want in your starter kit. Up to $175 worth of product for 99 plus tax. No shipping. It's awesome. Plus they throw in a past paper pumpkin kit um, as a free little extra gift. And you know how I love those. So, <laughs> so hopefully those of you that are um, into Stampin' Up! stuff will take advantage of the kit offer that is going on through March 31st. If you do not have a demonstrator already, then I invite you to um, go to, oops, that's Facebook. I invite you to go to my um, website, stampyourartout.com. Uh, there's a link there about joining our community and getting the starter kit and I would love for you to be a part of our group So thank you so much for joining in um, I want you all to have a great week and we will see you next week. Thank you for joining me today And now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye. Bye